I'm a scientist guy who works with light. And it doesn't smell, doesn't weigh a thing. You could put tons of it in a truck and it gets the same mileage. It doesn't make a sound. You can't hear it. So silent, it can only surprise. Like it does artists when compelled to paint a still life with at least one green pear and the right salience of light, the right spread and softness and weave, the right airy color, not the blued light through a flaccid icicle, or the meadowed light in the gold of dawn when light could trace a pear with orange chroma, but a light that cradles dust along its silent rays and illumines with a favored gray the vodka in its glass. And then there is a different light, the nimbus. Often appearing above Mother Mary, sometimes a halo of red neon, billboarding, half-closed statue eyes. Half-closed to the illumination from within, called by the illumined, the dark light. Tunneled from caves of the illumined heart, cleaved from a glowing magma, pulsed through the vapor chest, comes the quaking of dark light. The texture, the chroma, the presence of light in a world too dark.